Hi, I'm Bailey White and this is Undecided. We're here at Vanier Elementary in St. John's and who knows, maybe the future Premier is here in this room. But today we're going to talk about the future of the economy. You know, so much of our economy is tied up in global factors that we have no control over, whether it's mining or oil or even fishing. But there's a new sector emerging in this province and it's emerging fast. I'm talking about the tech sector. And today we're going to talk about how to grow that sector and what the next government might consider to make that happen. We have two guests today and I'll ask you to introduce yourselves. Sure, so I'm Kendra McDonald and I'm the CEO of the relatively recently formed Ocean, Canada's Ocean Supercluster. Awesome, and I'm Adam Keating, co-founder and CEO of Collab Software. So when we talk about the tech sector, to me it sounds a little bit overwhelming, a little bit confounding, like that's a huge, the tech sector. Um, I think maybe it'd be useful for you to tell me a little bit about your day jobs, like what's a day in the life of Adam look like? So it's interesting, I mean, Technology, in a sense, is just an enabling factor. You'll have companies like our company that is purely building software, um, whereas technology could be just applied to uh, an everyday business, whether it's digitizing your brand or having a website or helping people find you through an app. Um, technology is a pretty broad subject, um, and I don't think it needs to be uh, intimidating. Um, it can apply to pretty much just about anything you do, whether you're, like you mentioned, a traditional company in energy, um, all the way down to a small business that's two or three people. There's some application where tech can kind of help you there. Kendra, what's what's your day look like? So my day probably looks completely different. So the, the Ocean Supercluster is essentially trying to strengthen or grow the ocean economy in Canada. And really a lot of the areas uh, are, of growth are around digitizing oceans. So mm -hmm. autonomous vehicles and robotics and digital twin. And so the Supercluster has what's called their Technology Leadership Program. And what we're looking at actually is it's an industry-led program, but it's matching dollars between industry and federal government investing in bold new ideas uh, that are innovative and in a lot of cases bring technology into solving the challenges of oceans across sectors. So my job these days is really to talk about that, explain what it is that we're doing, work with companies in terms of generating those ideas so that we can uh, fund new ideas and grow the Canadian economy. So it's um, consumer products, research, um, I know uh, like server farms, I'm from Labrador, a lot of uh, server farms, things like that up there. What else? What, what don't I know about? So, so I think, you know, it's important to, um, for me. So one of my other hats is I am chair of the Newfoundland Labrador uh, Association of Technology Industries. Technology as an enabler. So if you look at the world today and pick any industry, they are looking at figuring out how to adopt more technology, how to digitize, how to be more connected, how to do things in a different way. And so that's driving a lot of the demand for technology. And so you think about tourism, for example. How are you more connected as a tourist? How do you get your information in advance? How do you make sure you've got all your booking references? How do you post the pictures on Instagram and Facebook of your tourism experience? Mm -hmm. And so it's really thinking about what is, what is generating the demand for tech is that all of these more traditional industries are thinking about how to be more digital. Yeah, and it's the same for us. Like We build a collaboration platform that helps the engineering teams streamline their design view process. And that came from engineering teams in manufacturing looking for a solution to digitize what they do on a day-to-day. Um, to help them be more efficient, to help them reduce costs and time. And it's the same thing, right? It could be traveling, it could be something super engineering focused, or it could be something as simple as you're trying to find the next place you want to eat. Um, it's happening literally everywhere, and it's cool to see it really start to pick up in the province. How, how, how big is this industry? You talk about it picking up. I mean, how many people are already here doing this kind of thing? New Newfoundland is definitely growing. Um, we started this company two years ago. Um, I think even in just two years, we've seen a substantial change. Um, it's still fairly, fairly small compared to other places in the world, but you're seeing this everywhere now happen. Um, companies that five years ago would never have talked about a digitization strategy is now one of their like key pillars. Something like the Ocean Supercluster for the federal government to put basically a billion dollars behind four or five superclusters and have all these companies put their money behind it shows you that everyone's committed um, to whatever piece of technology is most relevant for the region. So the tech sector itself here, uh, you know, we had our innovation tech summit on Monday, so 1.6 billion, we've got over 4,000, I think that number is even One, bigger. 1.6 <laughs> billion, uh, and that is the, how we measure the tech sector, right? So if you look at that, it is fairly substantial and it is growing. Is that, is that dollars, you know, yes. generate? Yes, wow. that's 1.6 billion dollars. Yeah. 
in, in this province? Yes. Wow. So, so it is not insubstantial in yeah. terms of the economy. And when you think about the opportunity, uh, it's even greater when you look at these trends and the opportunity that uh, Newfoundland and Labrador has to, to be able to benefit from them. Do you get the sense that the general public is aware of this? That this is happening in our own backyard? So we're trying, yeah. right? So I would say no. I think it's easier to get, uh, I, I have, my daughter is in grade four as well. And when I look at them talking about careers, it's, it's a lot easier to get your head around more traditional <laughs> careers. She talks about bakers and being a firefighter and a police officer or a teacher. But when you start talking about being a software engineer, or you start talking about being a coder or you're going to manage a robot, or <laughs> those are non-traditional careers. And so just getting the word out around the opportunity, the opportunity to work around the world but live in Newfoundland and Labrador, um, there's more work to do. Yeah, I think like for me, the biggest thing is enabling people to realize they can do this type of thing. So we travel, I spent the last month in places like California and Detroit and Toronto. Um, and there's a lot of smart people there, but there's no reason that people here can't be doing the same thing. You're seeing it happen at the university level. You're seeing it happen here with these kids today. These kids will be ahead of fourth graders in other places that aren't doing this. Um, there's no reason that anybody from Newfoundland can't be doing these exact same things. But why, why do it here? I mean, Adam, it sounds like what you're doing could be done mm -hmm. from anywhere in the world. Is there an advantage? to doing it in Newfoundland and Labrador? Yeah, I think, I think Newfoundland is, is just a special place in terms of culture. Um, we actually have a couple of companies now coming to Newfoundland to meet with us because they think it's a cool place and they like the people here. Um, and no matter where we travel, you always find people who just have a great respect for Newfoundlanders. And the thing that's true about that is you have things like the Ocean Supercluster, you have things like Natty and ACOA and NRC and the Entrepreneurship Center at MUN, Genesis Center. It's such a small community that they're all trying to help you. Um, so when you go to a big place like Silicon Valley, there's a lot of things that attract about being there. When you're here, you have a lot of attention. It's a lot easier to start something. And people truly just want to help you succeed. Um, so starting something is actually pretty easy here in Newfoundland. Getting into the next stage is where the help needs to come in. Um, and think about how do we grow co companies from the size of ours to something as big as Verifin is now to then the next step, which would be competing on a global level with something like Google. And Kendra, maybe it makes more sense for the ocean supercluster to be right on the ocean. I, I, I get that. Right. Yeah, so, so for sure. And when you look at Atlantic Canada, I mean, you look at Canada in general, we have an ocean advantage. And you look at Atlantic Canada, you look at Newfoundland and Labrador, you know, we've got some world class assets in terms of uh, some of the institutions that we have here and the opportunity. And then we've got, you know, offshore oil and gas, aquaculture. We actually have a fairly good representation across some of the ocean sectors. And so this is a, an opportunity for the tech sector to really engage. And we know uh, that there's a real interest for tech companies to understand more about offshore oil and gas as an example and their needs. I would argue the same probably for aquaculture and fisheries and the same for all of those industries. They really want to work with the tech sector here, but there's, there's more to do in terms of helping them to understand the opportunity. So if you're developing artificial intelligence, how do you think about fish as an application? How do you think about what it means to be on the water versus on land? What do you need? What would help grow this industry even further in Newfoundland and Labrador. Adam? I think the first thing is just awareness. Um, knowing that as a kid in grade four or someone in high school or someone going into a new job that you can do these things. Um, and that is not a daunting task. Um, I mean, when we started at university, it was only seven years ago, I had no idea this was even an option. Um, talked to kids now, I recently had a high school kid reach out to me, he was interested in doing tech in grade 11. He's now the second lead developer on the university Hyperloop team. Um, knowing that you can do these types of things is the first thing, and the second part is helping kids. It's helping people who want to transition between careers actually make that transition. Um, I think organizations like Natty do a good job of that, and there's people like the Entrepreneurship Center at Mon and Genesis that really give you the opportunity, but not enough people know about these places. Yeah, and I mean, it's helping also our, our traditional industries understand the opportunity that technology presents. So if you look at Hacking Health and, and the Health Initiative over the last couple of years and how that has changed the conversation around technology solutions with clinicians and others across the health sector, it's been amazing in terms of what that has generated from a technology perspective. So we can replicate that with other industries in the province in terms of really understanding the potential that technology brings to their, their businesses. I find it so interesting that you Adam would say, this, you know, seven years ago, starting university, you didn't realize this was an option. Mm -hmm. and obviously, that 
that is becoming less and less true all the yeah. time. Like, w if, would you make this mandatory? Should this be a mandatory class? In, in, I think, in I think the basics of technology, it's, just, it's more of a technical literacy thing. Yeah. I mean, having children be able to understand how to use a computer, how to use a phone so that when they're in a different city in the world, they can find the things they need. Um, so that if someone is somewhere else, they can call an Uber. Like just basic things. Teaching kids that at a young age is going to encourage them to do things like robotics and do more complicated things. They're going to get into traditional jobs, but they'll think about it from a technical perspective. Um, and that's when it starts to change. Um, right now, it's more of a forcing function from groups like us and companies that are here trying to help people. But once the kids start coming through and they're saying, I want to do this, it makes a huge difference. This Hyperloop team at MUN just brought 70 new members on completely organically. Um, and and who are they, like 70 new fr freshmen, sophomore students at the university who heard a cool story about the previous team and said, you know what, I want to do that. Right. Um, and when you see that start to happen organically, that's when it starts to become like a viral um, impact in the province. I think part of it too is understanding that, that technology is solving real problems. Mm -hmm. so, so coding is one thing in terms of the langu language of technology, but for some that's like learning English or learning French, right, in terms of basic communication. How do you understand what that means for, uh, I was in like, Germany, I'm traveling a lot recently, I think it was Germany, and they were talking about how they're now educating kids around distribution. So how do you follow a piece of soap from where it's actually created? How does it make the entire journey all the way into your house? And how much different technology actually touches that process? And there's several examples of that. So then it makes it real, and then you can, you can relate to that and think about what it means for you. Are there things that let's say the next provincial government could do that would make it easier to start a tech company here, to have a startup here? Are there things that would smooth this out and, and make, it, make it go faster, make it go smoother, make it, make it happen? Kendra? Yeah, so I mean, I think there have been things that we, we've seen in terms of the tech sector work plan. I think that government certainly certainly plays a big role as a procurer, <laughs> procurer of technology, right? So we have seen in the past that, that how government procures and their willingness to work with the local startup community and give them opportunities then creates a story that can be leveraged for that business as, as they move along. I think they play a role certainly uh, in terms of supporting the education. Um, and making sure that we're communicating across uh, across the education system, um, and and so those are a, a couple of key ways that they uh, they can help. Yeah. I think I think for me it's more so just continuing to support these groups who are trying to make a difference. Whether it's Brilliant Labs, whether it's one of the other organizations, it's supporting that, helping people consolidate it so people understand the bigger breadth of what technology is in the province. We talk a lot about technology in the sense of like a startup like Colab. Um, there's also a lot of technology that can be applied to traditional small business here that would make a massive impact. So helping companies like that understand their opportunity I think is important. Secondary piece for me would just be helping people get the skills they need to be able to help companies like ours. Um, there's a talent shortage in the technology sector here and having that get supported now at a younger age will fix the problem long term. So what would that look like? Teaching kids like these awesome kids here how to code, getting into high schools and showing them there's an option to actually do this, bringing them in front of some of these cool tech companies that are in the province and saying like, this is where you could literally work. Mm -hmm. um, I think all those things are super important and just supporting these programs. Like we've, we've had awesome support um, from almost every organization in this province. Um, I think that just needs to be replicated more broadly um, now because we, we found those pieces and worked their way through that web. But if you understand it and it's clear that, okay, you're starting a company, here are the five things you can do to be successful to at least start it makes it a lot easier for people to take that jump and do that. It sounds like what you need is is buy-in from, from leadership, buy-in from, from people who, who make those decisions. Well, the, big, the big thing with something like buy-in is it, it cuts down on the red tape. Um, when you're a startup or you're a small business, you don't have a lot of money and you don't have a lot of time. Um, so having little red tape when it comes to something like this and the support makes it super easy to say Newfoundland is a realistic place um, to start a company and then grow it quickly. Yeah, I think buy-in starts with understanding, so making sure that there's a real understanding of what the opportunity is, both for government itself in terms of being able to leverage technology, but also for the more traditional industries that, that we have seen a lot of, of focus on and what technology can bring to those as well. So do you think that there is that understanding? I don't, I don't want to pick on anybody, but do, but do people get it? Do people understand what they're dealing with here, the potential? It's coming. It's coming. Let's, let's, yeah. yeah. It's on the horizon. I think it starts every time you have one of these announcements or another event, it starts to become another piece. It's starting to get it. Um, but it needs, like, to fix it long term, it needs to start at the younger ages. Like, 
everyone is starting to use their phone for everything now. Um, kids should know how to do basic things, no different than they know how to read and write, uh, and then it makes everything easier. Time now to play a game I like to call Fantasy Premier. So I want to know what you, in, in your industry, in your sector, need from a leader. What's the ideal leader look like, and, 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 and what do you need, basically? So I think we have seen in other jurisdictions that where you have a tech-savvy leader, that really drives the conversation around tech, where they're truly thinking about tech first, where they're thinking about digital by design. And so I think for us, we would really benefit uh, from that. And we talked about talent shortage. Like we have an aging demographic, and technology is a critical part of the solution for the future productivity and economic prosperity of the, of the province. So I think really understanding that is, is critical to, uh, to leadership. Yeah, I think in taking someone that can get out, listen, learn to the ones that are working really well um, and start to figure out how to replicate that at government level, it's hard. Like The experience is not necessarily going to be there um, in this province, but there are people who get it here. Um, and listening to those people who understand how it works is no different than myself as a founder, listening to mentors in the community who taught me how to do things. Uh, I think it's just being able to go out and take your guard down and say, okay, these kids need to learn how to do these things. These startups need this help. These traditional companies need this help. How do we actually do that and make it a priority? I think that's really the most um, you can ask for at this point. It's easy to sort of get hemmed in when you're talking about elections to think about the next four years, but forget the next four years. Like, what do you think 10 years down the road, 2029, 20, what does is, what is this industry look like in Newfoundland and Labrador? So I'll comment in one area. If you think about the future of offshore oil and gas or aquaculture as an example, so I'll take an ocean example, um, that will be a world of remote monitoring. So we're going to see less resources that are on platform. We're going to see more of the monitoring that is being done remotely. And so that is a whole different set of skills in terms of sensors, in terms of the robotics, in terms of the technology. And so that is where the world is heading. And so thinking through what do we want our role to be in that world as an example. Yeah, I think even just like even like a step with that is like even as you go through this, people are now starting to take iPads on the site. Everything is digital. Um, a couple of years behind in the province in some places, but I think that's picking up quickly, and you're going to start seeing everything being tied together because the efficiency you get from having a digital solution that is easy to work with, whether you're an internal company, external groups, um, that's truly all integrated. You see that on the, the worker front, but then also as a business, the value you're going to get is huge. So that's what all these things are around. It's all around efficiencies. It's around safety, um, saving money, time, all those types of things. Uh, you'll probably see some pretty cool tech uh, in 10 years in this province. I want to thank you both for joining me. Class dismissed. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll be back in a couple of days with more Undecided.